Welcome. Welcome to this place in cyberspace, which we sometimes refer to as the virtual mission chapel of the Archangel Uriel, part of the Temple of Gaia. Whether this looks like something you've avoided or something you miss, we hope you will find what you're looking for while you're here. We are omnidenominational. We don't teach you our path. We help you find your own path. If you have a path, we hope we can add some dimension to it while you're here. And you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. If you don't have a spiritual path, we can help you find yours. If you once did have a spiritual path, but you were driven away by issues, especially issues having to do with other people on that path, we hope that you can come here for the healing you need and the restoration you deserve. Above all, welcome. Merry meet, blessed be, and blessed in bulk. And welcome to the Mass for the Shutout. I consecrate this circle of power to the ancient gods. Here may they manifest and bless their child. I consecrate this circle of power to the ancient gods. Here may they manifest and bless their child. This is a time that is not a time. In a place that is not a place on a day that is not a day. I stand at the threshold between the worlds before the veil of mysteries. May the Ancient Ones help and protect me on my magical journey. I call upon you, powers of air, to witness this rite and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of fire, to witness this rite and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of water, to witness this rite and to guard this circle. I call upon you, powers of earth, to witness this rite and to guard this circle. Hamari nodri helgeveteta kotver. Ha mari austri helgeveteta kotvert. Ha mari sudri helgeveteta kotvert. Ha mari vestri helgeveteta kotvert. Ha maru femir helgeveteta kotvert. Ha maru femir helgeveteta kotvert. Ha mar helgeveteta kotvert. Who make our king there? As God or Midgard. The circle is bound with power all round. Within it I stand with protection at hand. Those of a more sporting bent might do well to take odds on where I'm going to pull a reading from. Have them all or whatever else. In this case, 
the Episcopalian 1928 Book of Common Prayer. And I'm reading the Gospel selection for the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, February 2nd. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him that by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now that's in the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. And there's a lot in that, including some stuff that I could use later on another subject, and maybe I will. But, the feast observed on February the 2nd, which happens to be the same day that we have as in bulk. Gosh golly, isn't that a coincidence? And yeah, in bulk. The Sabbath which celebrates the first actual physical fulfillment. At Yule we had the birth following the death that was at Solomon and a promise. Imbolc, you can think of, if you think of Yule as a birth, Imbolc would be a Jewish bris, a Christian christening, a Norse naming. And an awful lot of them happened at about the same time in a child's life, relatively speaking. And I just read another. The Feast of the Presentation. It's when the first shoots spring up from the ground. Boing! Through the snow even, which we've had to deal with quite a bit lately if you're living anywhere near me, or just about anywhere else in the U.S., or quite a few other places for that matter. But it's when those first shoots begin to sp spring up through the ground. And like I've said, you'll find an awful lot of imbolks under various names in various traditions, especially the traditions that have hard winters, like the Norse and the Celts. Candlemas, the Lucia celebration, the Brigid celebration, the Feast of the Presentation, or known as the purification. Isn't it amazing that all those paths take the time to point out the significance of in bulk. 
And the funny thing is that a lot of people don't pay much attention to Imbolc. I have a feeling that this is one of the more powerful celebrations with one of the biggest potentials for really doing something. What's the basic premise here that I see in so many of these celebrations, especially among the Scandinavian and the Germanic and the Celtic? You notice for Breed, otherwise known as Brigid, and for Lucia, you got candles. Now, we were using some candles around Yule. And suddenly we got candles again. Yeah. Why not? It gives people a nice break from the bleakness and the darkness and the cold to remember and celebrate what's coming. This cold is not going to be with us for a whole lot longer. And so once again we celebrate. And this time we're celebrating the promise of what's coming. And we've seen the first manifestations of what's coming. Those little shoots starting to spring up through the ground. Snow or no so snow, they're there. And as I was writing this, I had a little bit of a revolutionary thought. If you've paid attention to what I've been saying here and in a very different pastor study and secrets in plain sight, you know that I don't mind stirring the pot a little bit. And we've got some people here, some of you, just like me, have had some experiences in the past dealing with what we've been told about such things as God's will, God's time, God's higher plan. And you hear enough about it so you wonder, after what you've heard about God's will, is he crazy? After what you've heard about God's time, is he lazy? After what you've heard about God's higher plan, what did he have to be on to have such a plan? Okay, how about God, the will of the divine by whatever name we call that particular divinity, the will of the divine is our happiness and well-being. The divine's time is when the time is right. And that is, includes when things have been brought to fruition. I can't take an apple seed and have it poof go into an apple tree any more than I can take a bunch of ingredients, whip them together into a bunch of dough, and I don't know, should I use a flamethrower instead of an oven to see if I can get it to bake a cake instantly? No. The cake is going to take the appropriate time and temperature to bake. So the divine's time is at the right time with enough time to get it done. And the higher plan is for happiness and well-being for all. And it's a shame that there's so many mortals that want to mess, mess with that. And for Imbolc, well, I'll tell you what I think I'd like to do, and I'm going to do it. And you're welcome to join me. I'm going to thank the Divine for being so faithful to us.
Somoripi. Since the dawn of time, people have sought communion with the divine. And the divine has sought to facilitate that communion. Toward that end, the divine has acquired many faces and facets, so that over the generations, people would be able to envision and commune with the divine in terms which they could understand. Now as we come to know better the ways of our ancestors and the ways of others, we strive to see the unity behind the innumerable faces and facets of the divine. Like a diamond, the divine has facets, each facing a particular direction and having its own characteristics. But each facet is connected to each other facet by the rest of the diamond, such that no facet can claim to be the entire diamond. And that diamond is the divine, that most high God, whose first priest known to us by name was Melchizedek. I stand here before the Most High God as a mortal among mortals. I am a priest because the Divine called me to be a priest. And I hold myself accountable to the Divine for my deeds as a priest. And I stand with the priests and priestesses who have come before me in proclaiming faith in the Divine. I believe in the unnamed God, the bornest one from whom all else divine and mundane was created. And in the many facets and faces of the Godhead, named and without names, seen as gods, goddesses, or otherwise, which reach out to receive each person within mankind in communion, each according to his or her perception and understanding of the divine. And I believe in the archangels Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Ariel and other angels known and unknown. And I believe in one earth, the mother of us all, and in one womb, wherein all men and women are begotten and wherein they shall rest. And I believe in many paths to the divine, all leading to the divine. And I believe in the gathering of people of like mind and the power and energy they raise when gathered for like purpose. And I believe in the communion of saints and for as much as food and drink are transmuted to us daily in a spiritual substance, I believe in the miracle of the Mass. And I confess one baptism of wisdom whereby we accomplish the miracle of incarnation. And I confess my life, one individual and eternal, which was, and is, and is to come. So mote it be. And so we proclaim the great mystery of the divine. God is born. A God lives. A God has died. A God is born again. A God will live again. Father Odin, Lady Freya, El Shaddai, Mari Yeshua, Lord Carnuno, Slay Caridwin, Mighty Thor, Lady Frigga, Lady Sif, Lady Hedvig, Lord Forseti, Raphael, Gabriel, Mikhail, Uriel, I invite you and welcome you to this temple, to this circle, to this rite. I welcome you, and as a token of that welcome, in accordance with the ancient ways, I break bread with you.
get you welcome in reverence and respect, but also in friendship. I welcome you in friendship. And as a token of that friendship, and to bind that friendship, I offer drink. Behold the feast with which we welcome the divine. Take of the bread and of the cup and feast and celebrate as the divine within welcomes the divine without. Thank you for joining us and joining with us in this celebration of Impo. In a Christian harvest hymn, there's the line, first the blade and then the ear, then the fruitful corn shall appear. And today, we celebrate seeing the blade, knowing fulfillment is coming. And so, I thank you. And we thank you. And most especially of all, We who try to be faithful to you. Give thanks to you for being so faithful to us. And we thank you so good. And so mote it be. Forth in peace, O powers of air, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of fire, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of water, my thanks and my blessings. Go forth in peace, O powers of earth, my thanks and my blessings. all beings and powers of the visible and invisible, depart in peace. May there always be love, peace, and harmony between us. My thanks and my blessings. The circle is open, yet ever it remains a circle around and through me. Always flows its magical power. 
and so mote it be. Blessed Embok. Uriel's Gifts and the Secrets in Plain Sight are sponsored by the Temple of Gaia. Your spiritual journey is exactly that, a journey. Like any other journey, there's a beginning point, there's a destination, and there's every step from the start to the finish. Religion is like underwear. What works well for me might be inappropriate for someone else, including you. I can guarantee you that no matter how similar our paths are, they will not be identical. At Temple of Gaia, we don't train you to our path. We show you how to find and pursue your own path. We also help you prepare for your ministry. Prepare, yes, no matter how far along you are, there will always be something coming to prepare for. Ministry, we all have a ministry, beginning with our own ministry to ourselves. Above all, we provide a great place to come together and to share. We're located in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, and wherever cyberspace can be reached. Temple of Gaia is a Wiccan church incorporated under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. To learn more, visit our website at templeofgaiainc.org. That's T-E-M-P-L-E-O-F-G-A-I-A-I-N-C dot O-R-G. We also have a meeting place in cyberspace at templeofgaia.ning.com. If you like this, you might also enjoy our weekly audio podcast, The Secrets in Plain Sight, available through iTunes or almost any place else where free podcasts are available for download, including its own website at secrets.libsyn.com. Thank you for coming. I hope that you've found something here that can help, perhaps a seed that might take hold and grow to your benefit. Feel free to return at any time. We intend to always have something for you here. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.